Hey, David Brewster here with New Brewster's Millions of Rants, and this is Finger Picking in the Dark. And as I posted here on YouTube and also over on Facebook, uh, the power went off here for about 48 hours, which totally sucked. But during that time with no power, you know, I sat right here and I kind of recreated what I did in the dark, you know, in that opening kind of jam. But I sat here, you know, in the dark, literally candlelight, had a flashlight or whatever. And I just played my nylon string guitar. I definitely love this little uh, LaPetri, you know, nylon string. It's very comfortable. I've featured it before. It's been a little while. And I've talked about flamenco guitar and classical guitar, you know, here on the channel multiple times. And this episode is actually a finger style exercise or warm up that I wrote back when I was in high school and I was actually studying classical guitar at a local university. I was like a junior and a senior in high school when I was studying learning how to read music and learning classical guitar technique and composers and pieces. And speaking of that, here's an image with 10 essential classical guitar composers that I highly recommend you check out. These are great players. So I do receive a lot of comments and requests for educational material and book suggestions, you know, from viewers out there. And for classical and fingerstyle, you know, guitar playing, there are a lot of books I could recommend. But one I'm going to throw in the mix that most people maybe haven't seen before is David Oak's Classical and Fingerstyle Guitar Techniques book from Hal Leonard. And that was from the year 2000, so it's 24 years old. But that's a great book filled with exercises and warm-ups, and uh, he runs through a whole bunch of stuff. There's little excerpts of pieces and everything. Highly recommend that book if you're wanting to, you know, definitely improve your fingerstyle and, you know, classical guitar technique, or maybe you're diving into it for the first time. Or maybe you want to review and kind of, you know, kind of tighten up your ability and everything. Great book right here. So like I mentioned during the intro, I actually wrote this finger style kind of warm up or exercise, workout, whatever you want to call it. I actually wrote it when I was still in high school. So I've had this for a long time. And honestly, when the power went out and I was sitting here, and I couldn't look up stuff online. It was too dark to sight read anything. And I was literally just sitting here playing guitar in the dark or by candlelight. But uh, I hadn't played through this piece in a long, long time. I actually kind of half forgot about it. And then as I sat here and I just started running through some things and making things up and writing or whatever, I started playing it. And it kind of was like deja vu, like, oh yeah, man, I've had that forever. And I hadn't played it like in probably a couple decades. But then I sat here and kind of worked through it. And then I had the light bulb over my head like, hey, let's share this on the channel. I've definitely had requests for more, you know, classical, nylon string, finger picking, finger style, you know, guitar lessons and info. So this is a great lesson. It's very simple as far as the chords. There's really just five chords in the whole thing. Um, not counting the little extensions and kind of little alterations, but there are five different chords. And the reason the chords are so simple is so you can focus on your finger style, you know, technique and approach. So if I made the chords, you know, really stretchy or hard to play, that would make it even harder, you know, for you to play through this. So there's five basic chords and then a series of different techniques and, and arpeggios and stuff, rolling and kind of skipping along and everything. So it's a great, you know, exercise and kind of technique boost if you're new to playing finger style. And like I said, I just kind of rediscovered, you know, this old piece that I'd made up. And it's like, yeah, that's actually a really good workout. So here we go. Okay, so let's break down this workout. So there's five different chords, and I'm not going to declare what key this is in. I'm actually going to leave that kind of suspended or hanging until that final chord. The final chord is actually the key of this little workout. So I'm kind of testing some of the viewers out there because some of you have asked for me to kind of test and quiz, you know, during some of these lessons. So see if you can guess what key this is in, and it won't be revealed until that final chord. But it basically starts right here, C major, and then you'll hear this melodic, you know, melody note kind of changing that G to the high E. But then the finger style pattern on that first chord is kind of extended and variated through every chord except that last final chord. It's a little different. But we're doing this. Right? That's on C major. So right there, right off the bat, you're basically plucking the octave, the C and C on the A and the B string, and that's very common in classical guitar. And I actually loaded this exercise with these rolling patterns and stuff that I was encountering in some of the music and 
some of the stuff I was working on as a student. So I just put everything in one, you know, kind of simple, you know, exercise, and it's actually pretty good. Um, so start with that octave pluck, and then you're rolling backwards, right? Like that. So pluck, and then single note, single note, single note on that G, D, and, and the A string. And then right here is when you're going to grab that G note, and then you're rolling those four strings backward. Like that. Something like this. Right? So there's a lot of backward movement. Right there, you're going to ascend, starting on the A up to the B, like that. So that C major chord is played like this. One more time. And then just loop that. you've looped that maybe twice you could do it four times or as many times as you want the chords actually going to switch uh, to E minor right there so we're going from here to right here right kind of mimicking that same in that G to high E movement and that uh, those two notes exist in both those chords C major and E minor but you're borrowing that same kind of pattern So now you're going to switch here, go ahead and grab that G note, but you're going to finger style like this. It's very similar to what you did on C, but make sure you start with that low E open right there. Repeat that however much as you want, and then go back to C major. And just start with that kind of back and forth between C major and E minor. That's the first part. in different directions doing that octave pluck in there which is great and then after you've done that maneuver then it changes so now it's a, uh, basically a minor seven right right there and do the same pluck make sure you got that G up on top and then right there move that to F sharp now it's an a minor six treating that A minor almost exactly like the C major chord, it's just the chord has changed now like that. And right there, basically change that to a D7 over F sharp, and then you're going to actually start that with that G note up there, and that's a D7 over F sharp, or a D7 sus uh, 4 over F sharp like that. And then change that G to F sharp, and then it's just uh, D7 over F sharp. rolling upward on that low E string. That's tricky. And then go back to A minor again, that A minor 7, A minor 6. And then back to that D7, D7 over F sharp or whatever. finish right is right here and there's your key right there so that entire exercise is actually deceptively in G major but you never hear that chord or the you know the, the root note or the you never actually hear that uh, you know G major chord till the very end so it's kind of saved and then it kind of surprises you at the end like hey G major but right there you know just slowly kind of walking through that exercise it's definitely really good for your right hand to get that finger style movement and technique built. And like I said, the chords, you know, for your fret hand are pretty simple. That way you can focus on all that finger picking and plucking going on over here. Like this, just nice and slow.
go back and forth between those two chords and when that really feels kind of smoothed out, then switch to the A minor and that D7 section. Like I said, it ends on G major, so pluck the low E and high E together, like that. And then right there, you're going to basically do the low E and high E together, roll backward that uh, B, G, and D string. And then you start playing Leapfrog. Like that, and that's like the A to the G, D to the B, G to the high E, and then uh, D to the B, and then N with the open G string, like that. actually ended it with like a plucked, you know, G harmonic up on top right there. So like I said at the beginning and throughout this video, um, you know, that's something I wrote back when I was in high school and I was studying classical guitar with a local instructor. I've talked about him before, Renato Baturi. He also uh, worked with Andy Timmons and supposedly also gave Randy Rhodes a guitar lesson back in the early 80s. But, uh, Great guitarist, by the way. Renato Baturi's retired, but definitely a badass uh, musician. But that piece, you know, is pretty simple, but it's definitely challenging. And after sitting here in the dark and kind of playing through other stuff, and then I hit that, it definitely kind of shaped up, you know, my technique. I felt kind of more warmed up and more connected with the guitar and the strings. Good exercise. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Brewster's Millions of Rants with finger picking in the dark. And basically, this episode came out of nowhere. It was the power outage that actually sparked you know, this entire lesson right here. I forgot about the piece. You know, I hadn't played through it in a long time. And then I'm sitting here, and I played through it and thought about it. And it was like, wait, let's do a lesson on this because I've had requests for it. And also, it's an interesting you know, piece. You can play it on nylon string. You can play it on a regular steel string acoustic. You can play it on electric guitar. It doesn't have to be you know, like a classical guitar like this. And, uh, you know, I bought this guitar basically for me, like my own kind of personal guitar space. It doesn't have a pickup, it doesn't have a cutaway, but that's what I wanted. I didn't want to plug this guitar in and colorize it with a bunch of effects and stuff. I just wanted the pure, just fingers on string tone and sound. And I haven't recorded with this guitar yet. I can definitely mic it up and if, you know, I wanted to use it for a recording or something, I could. But, uh... That's why this lesson might be a little quieter than normal, because this guitar is not plugged in. It's literally just acoustic, you know, raw acoustic. And that definitely exposes a lot as far as mistakes and little squeaks and pops and, you know, faults and problem areas in your technique. Because if you can't play an acoustic guitar with some level of authority, there's a reason. You know, maybe you've spent too much time blasting distortion and effects and distortion are kind of covering up some of those mistakes and little kind of weak areas in your playing. If you grab an acoustic guitar, it's like everything's under the microscope. And you really have to be more critical because every little squeak and pop and missed note is very noticeable. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons and I'll be back before I know with more content and material. Thank you.